it's really hard to have someone come tell you what to do when you're so lost. I feel like when I was lost, I didn't want to hear anything from anybody. I wanted to figure it out. And for me, I figured out, okay, it's my environment. Like birds of a feather flock together. That's the one thing that I remember that my middle school administrator, Mr. Khan, would say to me, birds of a feather will flock together, Azahani Bernal. Birds of a feather flock together, Azahani Bernal. And I always thought, like, that's such bullshit. Like, what do you mean birds of a feather flock together? And then fast forward 10 years later, I'm looking at my life, and I'm like, wow, Azahani Bernal, birds of a feather flock together. Like, birds of a feather flock together. So change your environment. You have to change your environment because when you change your environment, you take yourself out of that environment, you isolate yourself, you have time to reflect. You have time to see, okay, instead of why me, what's next? What can I do? What, what's my solution to this problem? What do I need to change? Today we're with Nani Bernal, the fearless leader of the Empowered Tribe, an extraordinary woman whose consistency has helped her overcome adversity in life and business. She's an up and comer in the coaching space and a true motivational leader who believes it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Great to have you here. How are you doing? I'm amazing, Jonathan. Sweet. So you 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 flew in at what time this morning? Six a.m. Six a.m. See anybody who's listening, if you if you want to do anything in life, you got to get up and go do things. There's too many people that are just sitting around. Like, okay, yeah, it's good to listen to podcasts. It's good to talk to these people, but like. If you really want to connect with somebody, get your ass on a plane and go see them. Yep. You got to make sure you do seven touches. So, so we always like to start off on, for those that don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are and let's go into your story. Let's go. So my name is Nani, as you stated. Thank you for that intro. I am the fearless leader of Empower. Empower is a community where I help individuals get to the next letter level through accountability, resources, recharge, and routine. Uh, I took this on about five months ago. I closed down my moving company completely, and I just went forward with impacting individuals. Uh, my story doesn't start there. Uh, it actually starts when I was 12. At the age of 12, that's when my life started happening for me. A uh, big, big traumatic thing happened in my life where my parents got divorced. Uh, my parents getting divorced, and I'll just say the reasoning here is not your typical divorce, not just mad because mom and dad aren't together. Uh, my dad ended up having a child with his sister, ruined my life completely. Uh, things went downhill from there in that same year, one of my best friends got shot in front of me. Um, and then I started going down the wrong path, uh, thought that I needed to take care of my mom rather than letting things work itself out. So I got into a really bad, bad crowd, started selling drugs, started hanging around drug dealers, started doing bad things, you know, creating bad habits. Uh, with that, it didn't open doors for me. The only doors that it opened was juvenile cells. Um, and from there, I always knew that I wanted more, but I felt like I couldn't do more. I just felt why me, my sad life, this is what it's what it is. And then one day, uh, I, I got the news that I was having a little girl, and I decided, well, if I'm going to have a little me in this world, I got to make sure that I set the best example for it, because we plant seeds, right? And the seeds that were planted in me, they were meant to grow, but I wasn't letting them. I, instead of letting my life be buried to bloom, I was telling myself, I'm buried, this is a funeral for me, you know? And, and eventually, I started just getting into it, where I want it more, I want it different, and I stopped doing the drug dealing. I stopped hanging out with the bad people, but then I got into a new hobby. I fell in love with sales. And mm. when I fell in love with sales, the community that I was in was like the wolf of Wall Street. Like, I swear to you, go in there, the, the bosses every Friday buying us drinks, taking us out. You, you got deals. You go to the big strip club in Miami, which is Tootsie's. And I'm 20, 21 years There's old. There's a Tootsie's in Miami yeah, also? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a big thing down here. And, you know, I was the top dog there. And I felt amazing because imagine feeling like a loser, you know, like your whole life. Like, I drop out of high school. I'd lose my career in soccer. Um, I, I tore my ACL, and I was supposed to make it to the Junior Olympics. That was my way out. That's why I was like, yo, I'm out of here. And when that happened to me, I realized, okay, I have nothing left. So I got to live the title of being a dropout, being someone that got arrested cons consistently, someone that started dealing with a drug habit, and then someone that had a kid at 18. You know, so for me, when I fell in love with this sales, I felt important. I had people calling me miss. I had people asking me to look up their file and I had clients. So I fell in love with that concept of respect. And then I also fell in love with the concept of like the mind, because anything that I put myself to do, I achieved. And I was the only girl there. It was five people when I first started. Four years down the line, I was training all 60 people that were on the floor, creating systems. And 
with that, I thought, okay, I'm making great money. I'm, I'm, I'm in a better position, but I didn't realize every Thursday football night, I'm going to go drink with the guys. Every Friday, I'm super hungover at the office, and I'm going to go have some drinks. And it ended up being a lifestyle of, okay, cocaine, liquor, and m- making money. And I realized, like, dude, like, there, there has to be more to this. Like, you can't tell me now I got the money and now now I have a new habit, you know? So it took a lot of finding myself and it took a lot of mistakes. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you the, hey, I, I had it good the whole my whole entire life or say, hey, I did the perfect things because I didn't. Um, being that I made those mistakes and had those challenges and had those experiences and adversities, it really brought me to where I'm at today because I have no interest in bullshitting my life anymore. I appreciate I've, that. You know, I've already bullshitted myself enough. So what would you say is the pivotal point? What was the one thing that if you can look back, you would say, you know, when this happened, that's when I started going on to not not necessarily made a huge jump, but okay, that was either the bottom or this is the turning point where it was like, now we're going in a different direction. What was that pivotal point for you? I would say my my actual pivotal point in my life was when I was drinking and driving and I got in a car accident. And with this, I was so blacked out and I had no idea. I woke up, I woke up in jail. And first and foremost, I woke up and I thought, I'm kidnapped. Someone took me. Like I'm in a room. I no one's around me. I'm waking up literally 10 hours later and I'm like cleaning my eyes on. I'm like, oh my God, I freak out. And when I look out the window, I notice I'm in jail and I'm banging on the door, banging on the door. The lady opens the door and tells me you're on suicide watch. Uh, and you totaled your car. And I look at her and I, I tell her I had my, I had my girlfriend in there. Like, is she okay? She's like, let's just say you totaled your car and you have no bond. I thought I killed her. <laughs> I literally thought I killed her. So for 72 hours, I had no phone call. I had no proof of what happened all I had was that one lady that said you're in suicide watch for 72 hours and once this complete clears you'll get more information on what's going on so for 72 hours I thought I killed someone I also thought my life is over I thought my little girl like what the hell am I doing like I left the life of selling drugs I left the life of bullshitting and I just kid myself again I just got myself into something different and I think at that turning point it was more like are you serious, Nani? Like, you're, you're getting so many chances to see your life and so many, like, great opportunities, and you keep messing it up. You keep going back to the bullshit. And finally, after 72 hours, when I was allowed to call, I called my girlfriend. <laughs> that was the first person. I'm like, there's no way she's dead. Please, please, please. I call her, and when I called her, she hung up on me. <laughs> I called my dad and my mom. They hung up on me. I called uh, another friend, no one answered. So I'm like, I'm stuck in here. Like, is this what my life has come to? That even the people that I admire, the people I love, like they're gonna leave me in here. That means something's wrong. And, and it's not them, it, it, it got to be me. So by luck, I saw that there was a bondsman that I knew, one of my best friend's mothers, called them and I basically convinced her to bond myself out. So bond myself out and when I bond myself out, man, I, I just felt like such shit. Like, I literally really lived to my title. And I'm a big believer of titles. You know, with titles come tasks and challenges. And my title from everybody was loser, not going to make it. Okay, you got a dream, but you're just a dreamer. And I, I literally was living that, like just living the dream. And that same day, I got back and told my dad, I'm like, Dad, I got to go get something from Ashley's. And really what I did was went to the jetties in Fort Lauderdale. I had about six, seven pills, and I drank, and I had a bottle. And I was planning on killing myself. I was, I was really planning on killing myself. And, and I say this because this pivotal point of drinking and driving and the suicidal moment was the thing that changed me because I actually had a friend run up to me right before I jump in because they just felt like my message was so weird. And that's where I go, the jetties, when I want my mind cleared. And right when I was about to jump into the water, my friend just tackled me. And I look and she's like, why can't you see that it's not no one that doesn't love you? It's you that doesn't love you. And why can't you see that everyone believes in you and it's you that doesn't believe in you? Like, if you were to leave right now, what would you leave? And I just thought about them like, wow, like, if I were to leave right now, if I, if I were to end my life right now, all my all I would have left was a memory of, like, bullshit, chaos, like, no memories at all, like, nothing. I would have left the legacy of being exactly the title that everybody wanted me to live to. So for somebody that's listening, how do you how do you get to that next point? What was the first thing? Was it a book? Was it a podcast? Was it uh, 
somebody that said, hey, just start doing this? Like, what was it a routine? How did you start breaking those habits? I started breaking the habits by taking myself out of the environment. I started changing the people I was around because I realized I've, I'm a very self-driven per- person. And I think for people like us, like that are leaders, it's really hard to have someone come tell you what to do when you're so lost. I feel like when I was lost, I didn't want to hear anything from anybody. I wanted to figure it out. And for me, I figured out, okay, it's my environment. Like birds of a feather flock together. That's the one thing that I remember that my middle school administrator, Mr. Khan, would say to me, birds of a feather will flock together, Azahani Brunel. Birds of a feather flock together, Azahani Brunel. And I always thought, like, that's such bullshit. Like, what do you mean birds of a feather flock together? And then fast forward 10 years later, I'm looking at my life, and I'm like, wow, Azahani Brunel. Birds of a feather flock together. Like, birds of a feather flock together. So change your environment. You have to change your environment because when you change your environment, you take yourself out of that environment, you isolate yourself, you have time to reflect. You have time to see, okay, instead of why me, what's next? What can I do? What What's my solution to this problem? What do I need to change? And I think it's more or less my five C's that I go to, consciousness. You need, you need to have that consciousness of, this is where I'm at. Like, this is my shitty life right now. This is my position. I, I have great money, but I don't have the family. I don't have the good friends around me. I don't have the great mentality. So, so now that you know what's wrong, Nani, now do you, you know that what needs to change, what is next? And then there goes the confession. You know, I, I give myself consciousness and then I give myself confession. You have to admit to yourself what you're doing wrong. You have to admit to yourself your truths. You have to admit to yourself those skeletons in your closet that you're like, stay in there, stay in there, but you got to let them out. Because eventually, that's going to lead to your destruction, your skeletons. And a lot of people don't realize that, that what you're facing right now is something that you fucking buried. Sorry, am I allowed to curse in your show? Yeah, you that, do whatever you want. Okay. That, that, that you, <laughs> well, you, not you, with anything <laughs> that you want, but you can curse. Yeah, you know, but that, 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 <laughs> like, I just buried, 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 you know, uh, my problems. And they all come out eventually because you have different seasons of your life. And unfortunately, my season of my life was, hey, your skeletons are coming out this year. So you got to accept. So those were two C's. What are the other three? I have consciousness, confession, uh, clarity, commitment, and consistency. And I could explain it to you. So I feel that at the place that you need to be, is conscious. You need to be conscious of your surrounding. What's my starting point? Where's my ship pointing? Where am I pointing? Once you have that consciousness, now you have to give yourself confession. You got to be honest with yourself. If you're not happy with your job, you're not making money, I'm not making money. I'm not happy with my position. Uh, If you're not happy with the relationship you're in, you're doing something wrong, you know, I'm lying. I'm not happy with that person. You have to admit that because I think we fill ourselves up with so many voids and we try to justify the truth. Like, man, I I couldn't come to this trip because I I couldn't find someone for my kid to someone to watch my kid. And you know what? uh, This is my life. Why me? You know, instead of that, I, I made, I made things happen. I had to be clear to myself. Okay. I'm not in a good position to go ahead and, and tell someone, hey, I could pay you for it, but if I could go ask my mom and then work something out with my dad so they could watch my kid, you know? And, and I'm only using my example so people can understand, like, you have to be honest with yourself at that current situation. Now that I'm honest with myself and I got the clarity on what I need to do, confession, now comes clarity. Okay, I know my positioning. I know my truths. I know what I need to change. And now I'm clear on what I want to do. I'm clear on where I want to go. I'm clear on the direction that I need to do. And with comes clarity comes commitment because now I can make a greater commitment with where I want to move forward to. Now I can make a greater commitment on what I want in my life. And then once you have commitment, you got to stay consistent to it because 175 days ago, I wouldn't have had this conversation with you because I was sitting, reaching out to business owners locally, you know, and if I didn't stay consistently power hour, power talk, power master, my power, this power, that I wouldn't be able to sit here and say, I'm speaking on Jonathan Hawkins podcast today. And I got to speak to Dave Metzler last week. And I also got to speak to Dan Fleshman on Tuesday and I got to speak to Ryan Stewman and I'm going to go visit Bradley on Monday. You know what I mean? And that's consistency because I was honest with myself. I got conscious on where I wanted to go. I was, you know, I confessed to myself, Hey, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm not in the right position. I got clear with it. I got committed and then I got consistent and then my life changed. Bam. There it goes folks. So where did the inspiration to grow in power come from? And before you get into that, explain to anybody listening what it is actually that you do and what in power is, what the power talks are, what the portal is. Let's talk a little bit about that. Awesome. So in power, in power, in power, in power, in power. 
Okay, so so Empower <laughs> Accountability Group, also known as the Empower Tribe, is exactly how it sounds. It's a powerful community, a powerful community that wants to put the right resources in front of you. Um, it's a community that wants to recharge you and put routine into your life. Um, with that, I bring in different power players weekly to come, well, daily, really, um, to come in and speak to us and give us insight on their entrepreneur journey, as well as how we can increase our income or increase ourselves in business and life and in wellness. Um, with that being said, the Empower Accountability Group focuses on three areas of your life, business, personal, and health. And I hold you accountable to executing on the next level. Um, with that, we work through a 90-day goal tracker. You have a portal and a resource center where I have different indus- uh, industry experts to teach you their niche or to show you the guidelines on how to get started. And really, my, my community is something where I want to be able to let you know the average Joe or someone that has a story like me know that you're in power of your life. You're in power of your, your, yourself. You're in power of your future. But it all starts with you getting in power. You can't get power if you're not in power. You can't be great if you're not great. And I think actually having a community that's like, hey, this isn't what's wrong with you, but this is what's right with you. Because I think there's so many leaders that are like, this is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. This is wrong. This is what you need to do. I want to be that leader that's like, hey, this is what's right with you. And this is what we should do so we can get to the right direction. I, I, I f- have faced so many people telling me that they're a coach, so many gurus instead of gurus. And Say I've that again. So many gurus instead of gurus. What is that? That's basically a coach that fakes it till they make it. They tell you they're going to get your results. Gurus. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're just a bunch of, you know, people that, that want. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but yeah, doers are people that, you know, they fake it till they make it. They're, they're not really executing on anything. They're telling you a dream and they haven't even done it themselves. So I'm really big on that fake it till you make it. I hate that line. I hate that phrase. I hate anyone that really does that. Because so what phrase do you like? I like it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And I like leaders say, leaders say, leaders, bosses say go and leaders say let's go. And a phrase of mine is let's go and let's grow. Because there's so many bosses that say, hey, let's go, get it done, do this, do that. But a leader is going to be in the trenches with you. And, and that's what I do with my group. I'm, I'm not just telling you, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable. This is what you need to get done. You can ask anybody in my community. I created a 90-day goal myself. I, I'm right there with them myself, every working out, doing my power hours. I wake up at 3.30 a.m. every day. And at one point it was 3 What time are you going to bed? I go to bed by 9 o'clock, okay. 9.30. Uh, and the reason why I wake up at 3, 3.30 is because I want to get it before anybody else does. Mm. Like, no one else is getting up at 3, 3.30. And I got clients in Belgium. I got clients in Africa. I got clients in Netherlands. If I want to be an executor, I want to be a leader, I got to set the tone and show them that sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. As long as it's ethically and morally correct, do it because you're going to reap the rewards later. And look, again, I'm right here talking with you. So for somebody that's down in the trenches, somebody that goes, man, my, I, I resonate with that. However, I don't see I don't see any light at any end of any tunnel. I don't know what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to get out of this, how I'm going to do anything. Yeah, I've tried the perfect morning. I've tried the perfect this. I've tried, but guess what? Life isn't perfect. What would your piece of advice be to that person that's listening that's like, man, I resonate because, look, this girl's spitting the truth over here. A lot of people come on the show. A lot of people talk to me. A lot of people do a lot of things, but they don't tell the truth, and I, and that's because they're hiding it. You know, a lot of people come to me, Jonathan, help us with ads. Jonathan, help us do this. Jonathan, help us with that. And I'm trying to figure out why. Why, why do you want to do that? Oh, I want to make money. Why do you want to make money? I want to, I want to support my family. What's wrong with your family? Why can't you support them now? Well, you know, this, 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 and medical bills. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. And we try to get, like, what is it that's wrong that you come to me to run ads? Because you're not just running ads to run ads. You're not just setting things up to set things up. And I think that for most people, they're just they're just not real with themselves. They're yeah. not real with what what my life was like, and it's not like that anymore. For me, I never there was no silver spoon for me. There was a lot of hard work. Today, now people go, man, I want to go work with him. It's going to be so easy. I want to go do this. He, he, he did it so fast. They don't see the sleepless nights. They don't, they don't see it. They don't, they don't see the countless hours of me and my now wife in our one-bedroom apartment, like, struggling, struggling. They don't see any of that. They don't go, we don't go from a one-bedroom to a two-bedroom to a house to this. Like, they don't see any of that. They just see it like, man, must be so easy, must be so. What does somebody do to break these cycles? You have to some, something to say first? Yeah, you know what? I love that you said that because 
Most people right now are probably like, oh, man, consistency. She had a moving company. I want you to know my moving company wasn't all fairy tales. And, oh, my God, boom, she made it. And prior to that, my life wasn't like that either. And and just so you know, building in power, I've had to sacrifice. So I'm going to admit something to you and, and the public's going to hear because I haven't said it to anyone. I got my car repossessed two months ago. Because I went ahead and put my savings, a little bit of savings that I had into Empower. Um, there was a situation where I thought I put it in a deferment. Unfortunately, something got miscommunicated with the system. They didn't get my signature, whatever, whatever it may be. They called me and basically told me they're not going to put it on my credit because there was a mistake in their system. It should have been on hold. They took my car or whatnot. And while this happened, I'm sitting here thinking, you know what? Ed my let. Ed Milet. I love Ed Milet. He's, he's my role model. Ed Milet. Ed Milet tells a story where when he started his entrepreneur journey and really his real purpose, him and his wife just got married. And he had to take showers. Like, you don't know what you really don't got until you don't got water. That's mm. what he says. He said that he had to take showers downstairs in his apartment complex pool and cover his mm. wife with a towel every morning before anybody woke up. And he had to do that for several months. See, I got my car repossessed. And at that time, I couldn't think, oh, my God, is my mission going to work? Oh, my God, is this going to work? What I thought of it was, damn, someone took my keys. And Brandon Dawson just said, I don't ever want someone to take my keys. And when, when that happened, I'm like, damn, someone just took my keys. I'm like, wait, do I keep going or, or do I stop? And then I look out the window and I see my car's not there. I'm doing something right. And not because, oh, man, she's not bringing in the income. It was because two months ago I didn't launch a product. Two months ago I was giving my time for free and I was building value for people so they can see I'm going to really impact them. That same day I had a badass mastermind with Jordan uh, Stuppard and he was speaking about how we have challenges and how so many people let it ruin them and deteriorate them. And my group is sitting there talking, saying, you know, when think bad things happen to them, they stop. And for me, I felt like, when you're intentional, you don't stop when bad things happen to you. Like when you got faith, you don't stop. Because if I were to stop because someone took my keys, I would not be here right now. And I'm working this hard and I'm building this brand because this isn't something where I'm like, hey, my, my dad handed me 10K and I started it off. Or hey, Jonathan, um, you know, I, I have a perfect business. Fuck no. I'm, I'm building a brand from zero dollars to I'm, I'm going to impact 100,000 people this year. Like, it, it, it's going to happen. And, it. and that's it. Because, like I said, two months ago, I didn't have, you know, the funds to pay for my car. But now I launched my group, and now I have a, a, a 6K, 6K a month right now. And now you're here on the podcast. And now I'm here on the podcast. You're going to the deep dive tomorrow. Come Your brand's going to go out. Exactly. We're going on the cruise together. Exactly. Everybody's sitting at home. Exactly. Everybody that's listening right now. It, it, you, you, you're not going to get there overnight, but you have to take the first step. And I know it sounds cliche. Anything that anybody says that sounds cliche, I guarantee if you just do that, you're going to make it, yeah. you know, because yeah. the basic things done right, laser focus in a singular direction are going to get you to where nobody else can get because they're focused on everything else. Yeah. So if you can just do those basic things, do them in a singular direction, you're going to get to where uh, you want to be. You might not get there overnight, but guess what? It's going to take a thousand nights to become an overnight success. Yep. It's going to take so much time. And I think especially with social and, and digital and online and TV and all these things out there, it's people get consumed in reality TV as if, oh, I wish my life can be just like theirs. Yeah. I wish, I wish, I wish. Well, guess what? That's reality. That is their life. If they can do it, you can do it. And I know, again, if, if I ever say it sounds cliche, just do that. Like, I literally tell people all that. They yeah. say, you know, what fancy tricks are you doing in this and that? I'm like, dude, I do the basics. I build relationships. Leads are great, but guess what? Those are not going to bring you business the way that you want. They might bring you business, but they might not bring you happiness. They might not be people that you want to work with. You know, I, I got to a point where I started turning away people like, man, can I accept this listing? Yeah. But if I accept this listing, then I know we're going to butt heads. If we're going to butt heads, then it's going to lead to a rocky relationship at home. If that happens, I'm going to go drinking. If that happens, I'm going to be hungover. If that happens, we're going to butt heads even yeah. more because that person's going to know. And guess what? They're not going to refer a client. Like it's just this downward spiral of, and that's why, you know, I try to tell people attract literally attract the type of people like me and you talking, you got me going now because yeah. I'm like, 
I, these are the type of people that I want to be around because I don't want to be around with somebody that's like, oh man, like my thing got shut down. I, like it's over. My car got taken away from me. It's over. Like I lost a hundred dollar bill today. The world's against me. Like I don't, I don't deal with that because you can do anything that you want, especially if you just do some of the cliche things. What are some of the things that you do on a consistent basis to, to propel you forward? I wake up early. I okay. wake up early every day and I keep my promises to myself. That's that's the number but one. But why thing. do you wake up early? There's a lot of people that wake up early just to say they wake up early, but then they don't do nothing. Okay. They literally wake up and they're like, I was told if I wake up at 5 a.m., like I'm productive as shit. But See, they didn't know. Then they just sit there. It's because people expect you to do something for a week and they're going to see changes is not going to happen a day <laughs> it's not going to happen and me i wake up early and the number one thing i would say before i go into why i wake up early is i keep promises to myself because if i'm going to be confident if i'm going to be committed i need to be committed with myself first that's like me saying you know i'm going to wake up early and i wake up early jonathan i do this i do that and i don't do none of that to myself right but then i come and tell you hey i'm going to do this for you and i'm going to do that for you and i'm going to do this how am I going to do that for you if I can't even do it for myself? Mm -hmm. How am I going to keep my word to you? I'm going to say, hey, you got my word, but I don't even got my own word. How am I going to do that? So I've learned that you have to keep your word to yourself. So if I promise myself, hey, Nani, you're going to wake up at 3.30 today. And when you wake up at 3.30, what you're going to do is go ahead, rub your eyes, and you're going to go right into prayer. After you go right into prayer, you're going to go right into meditation. After you go right into meditation, Nani, you're going to go ahead and you're going to write your goals down. You're going to write your affirmations down and you're going to say it out loud. Why are you going to do this? Because you promised yourself you're going to do this. Why did you promise yourself you're going to do this? Because you want to get to the next level. You got a little girl that's watching you. You got people watching you. I got all eyes on me. You got so many people that counted me out. That's why I get up at 3.30 because the people that count me out, they're counting me out, but they're counting me out at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's okay. I already got six hours mm. and I'm ready for you now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm ready for you because so many people are saying, oh, I'm... I'm ready. You're not ready. You know why you're not ready? Because you can't accept the process of being ready. Eric Thomas says it best. He says, you want to, you got to want to be successful as bad as you want to breathe. And you got to want to do things that other people aren't doing. And that's what I'm doing. I'm creating a community to show them, Hey, 3 a.m. You got to wake up. You got to get it before someone else goes, gets it for you. I wrote a letter to myself uh, one time. And, and when I was on the sales floor and I basically said, Dear, dear you, I'm your competition. I wake up earlier than you. I work harder than you. I make more calls than you. When you're complaining to your boss about your hours, you're complaining about your commission check, I'm making my own commission check. And, and I started just basically writing this letter to myself so I could look at it and be like, wow, someone out there is really as hungry as me. Oh, shit. I, I can't let this person beat me. Although it's writing it to myself, it's, it's, it's the mentality of I never want someone to take my keys. I never want someone to say they outworked me. I never want someone to say that they're more passionate than me or they'll, they'll do whatever it takes because no one's going to do whatever it takes. Like, I'll do whatever it takes. You know, I've, I've had so much things happen to me in my life. You're in front of me. You see my arm, my right arm's a little shorter than the other, right? Yeah. So I was, when I was born, they pulled me out wrong. Okay, um, my the doctors and the nurses, they pull me out wrong. So with that, I have a brachial plexus on my right arm. That means I have no nerves, no tendons, nothing. I could turn this arm, I could do whatever. I can't turn this arm. I can't really do anything with this arm. What the doctors did, they counted me out. They mm. told me, you're not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to be able to put clothes on. You're not going to be able to drive a car. You're not going to be able to play sports. You're not going to be able to run. And they're right. I, I wasn't able to do it right away, but then I did it. I was number three in the state, right midfield, and they told me I wouldn't be able to run. They also told me, hey, you know, you're not going to be able to do what other kids are going to do. I was able to do everything, you know, and that's because my my parents pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. Now, the best part of the story is this. For 18 years, I was in a settlement with this with about my arm. You know, they tried to fight me on it because I was beating my adversity. So many people that have my condition, they can't move their arm. They can't do anything with their arm, just like they said. And because I was doing stuff with my arm, they're like, no, 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 it's not a real problem. It was a real problem. So when I turned 18, they granted me $2.5 million. You, you want to you hear something else, how life fucking works? <laughs> yeah, you think, right? You think, right? <laughs> how life works is I had a family attorney that was our attorney for 18 years. And this man was eventually my business partner. Uh, my mom and I, not too smart on, on business, so we did some silent investments with him. Um, come forward that this man <laughs> was taking our money out of our bank account, flipping real estate deals, um, he was getting us a return and telling us it was our investments. 
My mom and I got a little skeptical of it. We went to go visit the the restaurants that we had in Kentucky. Uh, when we go, we already knew something was fishy because there was no way in hell that this $100,000 investment is bringing me $400,000 in return back. Like, it, it just wasn't making sense. It, it, was, it was really looking skeptical. So when we're coming back from Kentucky, my mom and I are just basically come to a con- decision that we don't want to do business with him no more, um, that something's not right, something's off. Uh, when we get to Florida, I'm actually about to buy my mom a house, uh, with the money, you know, take care of my mom, bought her a car. I bought myself my first car. Like I've had that experience already. And when I was coming to basically purchase the house, we're going to the bank, we get off the plane, go to the house, we're excited. We change, we're going to the bank. (laughs) My mom's face is like white. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. We got to get to the bank. I'm like, okay, get to the bank. Every single account is zero, 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 zero. This guy took all the money out the account to flip a deal while we were in the air to flip a deal. And it goes to forward that the guy that he was flipping a deal with basically ran off on him with the money. So he filed a bankruptcy when we went to go forward with the lawsuit. Filed a bankruptcy. He just got out of bankruptcy this year. So I've had a lot of money. I thought I was going to live my life very well. And I've had it taken away from me. So for me, it's more or less like I got to stop having people take my keys. Mm. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to create that for myself. And that's why four months ago I made this. I'm like, you know what? There has to be someone out there that's freaking just giving up right now, that has had all the shit happen to them that I have had, and they're giving up. There's, there's no way. I want to show people that from zero dollars, I created an amazing brand that from zero dollars, I I didn't count myself out, got my car taken away, closed down my business, got like, I've had so much crazy stuff happen this year. And for the simple fact that I don't want no one taking my keys, I'm not going to let anybody take. So what's the next step? What's the next goal? What's the next, the the, the next, you know, pillar? Getting my mission out there. Um, I want to start creating more events. I want to do real, like actual masterminds, not just digital. What do you consider real? Like uh, in-person events. I want to do workshops. I want to be able to actually create. Where are those going to happen? In Miami. Okay. Miami and Tennessee. Coach Burt and I have some things working um, together. Uh, Him and I are going to be doing workshops together, and I'm on his crew speaking with you. Uh, So I have some things in in the works, but now it's just about really spreading my message since I'm very clear on it, and now people are starting to recognize it, and I'm starting to get known by these power players, and I'm reaching out to these people is really – Trying to get on podcasts, trying to get on more uh, events. If I can't get on events, create the damn event myself. But um, mm. I'm, I'm ready to make some noise. And I think one thing you kind of brushed over really quickly is you said, I'm really clear on my mission now. And talk about that, you know, I'm, because I think there's a lot of people that can do very well in, in, in this life, but they're trying to do a lot of things. They don't believe what they say they believe in. They don't actually, they're not an actual expert in what they say they're an expert in. So Getting clear with your mission, how has that helped you? It's helped me tremendously because at first I used to see my mission as a mess and I'll get biblical. All the people in the Bible, their stories, their messes, right? But at the end of their mess is a greater mission. At the end of their their mess, it's a greater result. And they turn that mess into a mission. And I realized that in order for me to get clear with what I want to do, who I want to impact, I need to not see this as, man, this is a freaking mess. And I get, then I'm going to put systems in place. I got to take my mess. I got to repurpose it into my mission and I got to get clear on what is my mission. So I broke down the pillars. What is in power? What do I want to do with in power? How am I going to do it with in power? And the most important thing, why? And once you actually break that down, what, why, how, and you break it down more than once because you're going to get yourself generic stuff at first. It's kind of like the seven levels deep exercise I do. I make you say, okay, why do you want to get this done? You know, uh, I want to be able to be a success. Why do you want to be successful, Nani? Oh, because I want to give my child the lifestyle I didn't have. Okay, why do you want to give your child the st- lifestyle she never had? Uh, because uh, she deserves the world and, and I love her. Okay, why does she deserve the world and you love her? Because she's all I got. Okay, why do you feel that she's all you got? Well, because I've made mistakes in my past and I want to make her proud. Okay, well, why do you want to make her proud? Because I want to show her that I became somebody. Okay, why do you want to show her that you became somebody? Because I worked so damn hard and she's seen it my whole life that I want her to know that she can become somebody. You see how my seven levels, like, it went from I want her to travel to, like, the real purpose, you know? And when you break that down with your business and you break that down with your mission, you're going to get seven levels deep with it. Like, okay, 
Um, Empower is a co- uh, an accountability group. Okay, now it grew deeper than that. Now it's not an, only an accountability group. Now it's a resource center. Okay, more than a resource center. Now it's a community. Okay, well, what, what else is it going to be? It, it's going to be a next movement. It's going to be a, a, a widespread message that it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And you can get in power of your life today. Like literally listening to this podcast, you can get in power. But I can't do it for you. Jonathan can't do it for you. Who's going to do it for you is you. You got to change. Not only when you're suffering. Like when you want to really fucking change, you got to go ahead and deep dive into change. Like, See, everyone's like, oh, you're a risk taker. I- I'll say this. <laughs> I'm a risk taker this year. I'm a risk taker. Because everything else had a plan and it was depending on somebody. I had a partner in my previous business. The the uh, businesses that I helped before, they had owners. So like, yeah, like it, it was kind of a risk working for them. But what was I risking besides my time and my money? Now, the risk I took was starting in power. That was my first real risk where I'm like, okay, I'm closing down my business. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be seen as a coach. Okay, uh, I got a brand, never got into branding before, but I, I read Russell Brunson, so I, I know that I'm an expert now, you know? And, <laughs> and I read Expert Secrets, and I read Dot Com Secrets, and I fell in love with the concept because I'm like, you know what? There's all these damn gurus and not em- enough gurus. And there's a lot of women out there that I feel can get empowered by my story, and a lot of men as well, but I want to make it more or less like that picture that with all of us for the cruise, there's not a single woman on that lineup, but it's me on there, and that's powerful. And if I can show someone that, well, like them to see, damn, like this girl six months ago, she she wasn't even with these people. Now, six months la- later, I didn't let anything diversify me. I didn't let my adversities be looked at in a negative format. And I think a lot of us do that, that just because it's something bad happening doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just bad moment. You know, what, what can we do to fix it? And I think that my, 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 I thank God that I found my faith with him because I think at a point when you're just completely lost, you need faith. Like you just need faith. You need something to believe in. So you said that you you want to get your message out, uh, especially to women. I think that's super important. I tell speakers all the time, especially at their events, like it's it's male driven, and I get it. I'm a male. I don't, I don't want to give up my spot, but you know, there's tons of people and there's tons of things that we can be doing to also empower women that I don't think a lot of people are doing. Yeah. What what are some ways or what are some uh, things that you would like to see across multiple industries that that could empower women? And and what are some things that are uh, attainable, reachable? There's, there's lots of things, but they're not going to happen overnight. What would you like to see as maybe one of the first steps? I would like to see more powerful women. Okay. I think that a lot of the women in this industry... Do you think there are powerful women that are just not given a voice? They're not given yeah, a stage? That's that's what I was getting at. Okay. I, I want to see more powerful women in the sense of, yeah, there's women in power, but like, are you a powerhouse that aren't that's not going to just ride the coat wagon of... Of, of another man or are you not gonna are you not gonna accept the fact that let's say for example all the men got 45 minutes I get 20 like not mm. saying that's true but are you gonna be that girl that's like okay cool I got 20 minutes no like hell no like there's no way that you're gonna count me out compared to everybody else and I think that I want more women with voices I think so many women are afraid to say their message because they're they're afraid of the judgment they're afraid of what people are going to say, the expectation of what women are supposed to be. And I, I get it all the time that one, how are you, how are you a single mother and you're a business owner? And on top of that, you're not the typical woman that's with men. I, I like girls, you know, and to have to speak out on all my adversities and who I am, if I were to have a quiet voice and just accept what community, what the, the, the community says to me and okay, I'll take that 20 minutes. No one would see me as a powerhouse. I like to make sure that if I say I'm powerful, I'm going to do it morally and ethically, right? I'm going to make sure I stand up for myself, but I'm never going to let no one walk all over me. And I think that I want to be that voice for women that are like, Hey, just get up. Like, wipe your face and get up, girl. Like, this isn't over. Like, get up, girl. Like, this isn't it. Get up, girl. You know, like, I want women to know that just like I'm a powerhouse, baby girl, you are too. But you got to freaking feel the power. You got to get in power. And so many people count themselves out. So many uh, friends that I have that are stay-at-home moms that, oh, yeah, but my husband said I have to do this. Or, oh, man, you know, ah, he, he makes some money. Or, oh, I can never do that. And I think that factor of, like, I can never do that. Or, oh, if I had more of this, uh, I think that really ruins what mo- momentum that we have as women. If 
I had this, it would be different. If I didn't have my little girl then, then it would be different. Stop counting yourself out. You can, we're super women. Like, we can do it all. Like, I have my little girl. I work, if you've seen my, show, my, my podcast or if you've seen the actual videos, my little girl sometimes is sitting right next to me while I'm doing it. And that doesn't count me out. Just because I'm a woman and I, and I work and I have a little girl doesn't mean that I have to have less of a voice, you know? And I want women to have more of a voice. And at this February event kind of shows it. I'm on a lineup and I'm the only woman on there. And it, that's powerful to me. Super powerful. You said your next step is getting your mission out, making sure people understand what your mission is now that it's clear. So how do people learn about your mission? Mission, excuse me. How do they connect with you? How do they ask questions? How do they grow with you? So you guys can go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Uh, my personal Instagram is Azonani. You can connect with me directly. You're going to have to spell that out. I got you. <laughs> a as in alpha, Z as in Zulu, O as in Oscar, N as in November, A as in alpha, N as in November, I as in India. You're going to have to run that back so you could see it again. Azonani. Um, or simply just go to Empower Tribe on Instagram, Facebook. Um, that's where you can find me, my partner. Uh, my partner is a marketer as well as one of the biggest, biggest, mentees that I've had that I'm so proud of. Um, you know, he kind of is the pit, like the epiphany of work hard and, and you reap the rewards. He started off with me six months ago prior to me actually going uh, big with this. And now he is a six figure earner. He's being consistent. He just got mentored by Ryan Stuman and him and I are really reaping the rewards of our consistency. So uh, you guys should go ahead, follow him too, KJ um, at Empower Tribe. And, and you have an awesome podcast, uh, remind people what it's called, how they can find it, how they can subscribe to it. Go ahead and subscribe to Power Talk. It's full of powerful conversations with powerful players. And I know a lot of people say that, but I dig really. It's really a great. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me talk it up a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Because I got interviewed on your podcast and I told you, just like I told the people listening then that there's never been any better questions, better than mine. There's never been any better questions hers are 50 times better than mine. There's never been as much research. There's never been as much passion. There's never been as a lot of things on your podcast. So I, I give you whatever you want, props, kudos, whatever it is that you call it, because that was, and, and it, again, no excuses. It's yeah. a zoom video call. Who cares? We're going to take advantage of this. Yep. It's, it's a, you know, this is where I'm at, this is people driving in cars. It doesn't matter. No excuses. They can turn it on. They can flip it on. They can do this. They can yeah. do that. So, you know, I would highly encourage anybody listening right now to go listen and subscribe to Power Talk, correct? Yes. Power and uh, you're going to not only get, you're not going to get the do rules. You're going to get the gurus. You're going to get the passion. But really what you want to do is you just want to listen to the host, Nani, asking these questions. If you want to have a podcast of your own, listen to hers and then get all the questions she asked her guests. Like I asked the question while we were in Dallas, which is the one you asked me. I said, if there were three people, you know, <laughs> and, they, and they and they were to walk into the door, who would they be and blah, blah, blah. And people are like, man, I've never heard that question before. I'm like, man, we got to give props where props are due. It came from Nani Power Talk. So what's, a, what's yeah. what, before we end, what's, what's another, what's one of those questions that can really get something out of somebody that, that you've been asking on your, on your podcast or what's a question maybe that some of your listeners are like, damn, you got to keep asking that because that was, that was something good. What are, what are some, I, what are some, what are, there's a little bag of tricks. You got to pull out something. Yeah, here we you got to help so, us out here. So, so I'm going to help you guys out. So well, you're interviewing us now. <laughs> <Here we laughs> <I'm go>. kidding. <laughs> so, so what we do is this, a lot of people, not, not for nothing are going to go ahead and say, Hey, I want you as a guest on my show. They're going to fill out a form and you're going to have the person fill out the answers. That's cool. You're not going to give me what I want, right? Like that, that's just not going to happen. If you really want to bring passion into these shows, you want to really connect with the person. Because if I were to just connect with you, Jonathan, and I didn't do any research on you, you would have just saw me like a typical host, another person on Instagram that reached out. You're like, oh, cool. I want to get my message out there. But it wasn't a wow factor. See, I really want to build a relationship with you. So in order to let you know I care, um, I go all in and finding out who you are. And I think the most powerful question is, what was your childhood like? Because a lot of people don't mm. ask that. Most people are like, okay, cool. So Jonathan, tell me about your entrepreneurial life. How did it start? Get me ramped up. Mm. Who were you? Like, no, like what was your childhood like? I, I want to know about you at first. And, and I think you saw that in my, my power talk that the whole, the first 15 minutes was about you, who you were, who you became, how you got there, what your family's like. I took you back to some moments that I thought were amazing because 
when you take someone back to a moment and you remember it with them, they're like, yeah, yeah, I, I remember, I remember, and now I'm fueling you up. So I think actually taking a second to do your due diligence and just a tip so you guys know there's so many interviews out there with people that the best part to look at is a keynote. Look at their keynote. The reason why you want to look up a keynote is because they're going to, one, give you their story, and then, two, they're going to show you their expertise, and they're going to show you the fire that you want to bring to your podcast. I watched two keynotes from you, and I watched probably, like, six uh, little interviews of yours, and then I watched your whole entire YouTube, like, everything, because I wanted to know what you were fired up about. I wanted to know what you had expertise on. I wanted to know what I liked about you the most, and I wanted to, one, make sure that you were somebody that I wanted on my Power Talk. I don't just bring anybody on my power talk. I bring people that I find intriguing. I'm a little selfish, honestly. I, it's for me at the end of the day. I, it's for you guys, but it's for me. It's, <laughs> it's for me because, come on, I don't get an hour with uh, someone in your caliber to actually tell someone, like, not saying I'm a little person, but, dude, I'm, I'm a little person. You look at that lineup, like, all these guys income together is what I want it to be. So uh, with that being said, I'm kind of doing the Napoleon Hill way. I'm bringing an audience and I'm, I'm, I'm asking the questions and I'm bringing people that I want to bring on so I can learn from them. And I think it's very important for us to learn about them before we try to go ahead and say, hey, give me value. Hey, give me tips. Because no one wants to speak to someone and really engage with them if you're not really there for them. It's about being intentional. And that's what Empower is, is me being intentional. And more or less, because I, I want to meet guys like you, I want to connect with you. I don't know if an opportunity would come out of this, but I know that an opportunity can come down the line with anybody if I keep being consistent. I keep creating a relationship. I, I, I don't want it to just be a hour talk and that's it. Because mm -hmm. our relationship just led to me being on your show. Now I'm gonna, I, I'm supporting you. I'm going to your event, even though it's gonna be freaking awesome for me. Uh, but it's just the point of make sure that you're asking questions that actually matter. Make sure you're watching a keynote before the the podcast because that's what fires me up. And most importantly, bring people on that you actually care about. So many people just put it on because it's a name. And to be mm. honest, I don't care about names. Like you know what I mean. I really, really don't care about names because. It's just another person, and you're someone that's not someone that took it in an easy road. They're not someone that got something handed out to them. So make sure it's you're intentional with it. Where can people connect with you once again? Uh, because because we're gonna have to we're gonna give the uh, the uh, what is it Greek alphabet? No, it's not Greek alphabet. It's, it's what is the, that called? It's the military alphabet. What is it called? I, I don't know. No, no, it's called. You know why uh, I did that too? So, you know, I learned that to become an intentional salesperson. When I was in a call center, I realized that I had a lot of military people and they like, yes, sir, no, ma'am. And when I- Phonetic. Them, yep. Fin there you go. There it's a phonetic is. alphabet. And then I learned it. And once I did that, I got all the military vets. I got all mm. the military families. They ate that up. So that's- So it. remind <laughs> us again, where can people connect with you? Where can they go if they want to join uh, the Empower tribe? Remind them of your podcast. If there's anything else that you want to say, give the after you tell them that, what's the last piece of advice that you want to leave somebody that's listening right now? So you can find me on Instagram, Azonani, Empower Tribe on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, what I would like to offer to you guys is if you join my community, uh, you will be receiving, and the only way you'll do this is if you put in the promo code FREEDOM, I'll, I'll send it over to, to Jonathan so he could put it in the bio of the, the conversation. But if you put in FREEDOM, I'll get you $47 a month to be a part of my community. Um, you'll be a part of the masterminds. You'll be a part of just a tribe that actually cares about you and being a part of a leader that wants you to lead, not just me lead my ship. Um, and with that being said, what I would tell someone to leave off with is it is not how you start. It's how you finish. And I'm going to say that over and over until I'm blue, purple, whatever it may be. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Because if I were to count, it's how I start. Trust me, I wouldn't be here. Mm. And, and, and it's not a finish right now for me. I'm, I'm still going. I'm still growing. And, and my favorite motto that I say that everybody knows me for, so it'd be really bad if I didn't do it. Let's go and let's grow. <laughs> love it. Love it. So like my good friend, CEO of Lightspeed VT, Brad Lee would say, if you like what she said, great. If you want what she said, go sign up because that's the only way that you're going to get more. That's the only way that you're going to advance. That's the only way that you're going to actually get out of the trenches. It's the only way to move forward is to surround yourself with mentors and coaches 
that are going to hold you accountable. But guess what? That have also been there. So when you're down in the dumps, they know what it's like. When you're when you're feeling bad, when you don't want to wake up, they've been there. All the the gurus that are out there that 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 are trying to fake it until they make it. Well, guess what? They're not going to help you progress. But somebody like yourself who's been there, that's vulnerable enough to come onto somebody else's podcast and be like, "Look, I just met this guy, but this this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened." When I see that, I'm like, "She's going to make it." Why? Because she knows who she is. And guess what? If you go and you talk to somebody else and they're like, "Oh, well, drugs," like, "Oh, we don't want to hang out with that person." Well, good. Screw off because that. That person's not going to help you. Yeah. So if you can be really vulnerable, transparent, authentic, real with people, you're like, those are the people that are going to make it. So like I said, if you liked what she said, great. If you want what she said, go sign up in power tribe. I think that's it. That's pretty much it, man. And, uh, what, what I'll say this is don't doubt yourself. All you can do is grow. All you can do is show. And all you can do with that is let the money flow. So let's go. You, he- you heard it here, Nani Bernal, again, in Power Tribe. If you want to continue to hear more episodes just like this, be, f- be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Go subscribe to Power Talk. We will be with you guys next week. Thanks. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.